What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Hollywood uh, Zoomcast, episode number six. Six. I am Aji. Good man. Jason Ryan. TJ Goodman. That's one small wit. Your boy, good. <laughs> Yo, it's. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the one that we're here, what? So today. We uh, decided to go deep within our closets of shame and embarrassment and reveal our top five movies that we shouldn't like, but for some reason we do. I said, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and make that announcement that I'm not ashamed of any of these movies, sir. I think they are all amazingly <laughs> hilarious. Could you let me? Could you let me do the show? Could you let no, me? Do the show? No, no. <laughs> I refuse to let you go on to say that I'm embarrassed about anything, bro. I don't get embarrassed. Mute him. Mute his ass. Mute his ass. <laughs> I wish I wish I had four more hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's movies that I guess for whatever reason we we shouldn't like, and that could be from the standpoint of uh, you know most people think that the movie is trash, and we don't. It could be from the standpoint of. This movie doesn't really fit the type of movies that I usually like. It could be from the standpoint of this movie's really just not that good, but I like it in spite of it being not that good. So that's kind of where we are. As far as honorable mentions go, um, a couple from Facebook was Breaking 2, uh, I believe was up there. Shout out to Walter. What up, Cuzzo? Um, <laughs> that was one of the ones mentioned, but a lot of people, funny enough, were like, yeah, I'm not going to tell you that. I mean, like, we're friends. <laughs> we're not friends, like, in real life. <laughs> Breaking two came up last week, last time, didn't it? Huh? Breaking electric two. Electric boogaloo last time. It did. Electric boogaloo came up last minute appearance. <laughs> so, <laughs> so some of my honorable mentions. I'll, I'll go ahead and get into my. I'll do mine first. Oh God. Um. <laughs> God, these are harder to explain than I thought. Um. So I'll, I'll go in the order of of less embarrassing all the way to more embarrassing. So Time Cop. Time Cop is um my first honorable mention. Time Cop is dope. Time I Cop is dope too. But I think a lot of most people, that was on the fringe. That was a fringe one. But most people don't think that any of Van Damme stuff ages well. I actually think Van Damme stuff aged quite well. Um which was shocking. <laughs> Except for the splits. The splits didn't age well. Um <laughs> anyway, so uh <laughs> Trolls 2, um, which, <laughs> which is a, a, a terrible movie um, if for anybody who's ever watched it, but terribly entertaining. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cult classic. Classic. Speaking of cult classics, an honorable mention, because it was so bad, I couldn't put it in my top five, The Room. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> <laughs> The Room is the movie that this disaster artist from James Franco is based off of. You oh, take yeah. the pot, Lisa. If you get a chance to you go to YouTube, and type in The Room best scenes, and uh, it'll give you an idea of how despicable of a pick that was. Um, it is an amazing movie. It is. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, Lisa ain't shit by the end. Anyway, you could have made a dirtbag list. Um, but anyway, marry a pot, Lisa. Um. <laughs> The last, the last one, the last one, and this one, I should be ashamed of all around, but I'm gonna explain it a little bit, and that's Showgirls. Jesus. So, the reason why I like Showgirls so much is because I actually think that that movie got such low ratings because it was very honest. It was very truthful. Like, it showed her getting, basically, uh, she was, they, they tried to use her at every turn, showed the backstabbing, it showed just how, it showed how people in that environment are. Um, not that I know, <laughs> I wouldn't know, but I mean, like, I feel like that's kind of what what came about as far as that movie getting such bad ratings. Um, because when I actually sat down and watched the movie, I was like, this movie's actually pretty good. I was like, this movie's actually really good. It's not. It's nothing wrong with this movie at all. And uh, I think, you could argue a few things wrong with sure, it. Sure, sure. I mean, I mean, from the standpoint <laughs> of what I heard as compared to what I saw, like yeah. that movie is the visual equivalent to hamster vomit. Okay, I'm done. I'm done here. Uh, I'm done. Who's next? Someone else give their honorable mentions. 
I'll I'll go. Hamster mommy. <laughs> I'll go. My, <laughs> my first honorable mention is a pair of movies. Here you go. <laughs> um, it's uh, I got the hookup and I'm about it. Jesus, Master what? P. <laughs> I love them, but they're so bad. <laughs> but I love them. <laughs> they're thoroughly entertaining from beginning to end, but they are terribly made movies. But it's just let me, tell you, but let me tell you what I love about Jason. Jason destroys entire <laughs> industries. He doesn't just, <laughs> he mashes a whole series. He just, <laughs> not approach, he just should not approach to everything. <laughs> he disregards and entire series of movies like that nothing <laughs> but i but i'm saying i love them i just know that they are terrible they're just poor poorly made movies but it's okay it's all right that they're bad because that's part of the charm i can't wait for <laughs> <this>. wow <laughs> and then my other one obviously is the highlander with Mark. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. I love that honesty. And it was on my list before Greg mentioned that it should be on my list. It <laughs> already was written down. The yeah. Highlander with Mario yeah. Van Peebles. It's it's entertaining. I like it. It's bad. Sir, really you bad. You know what? That, sir, I can get behind 100%. That I agree with. <laughs> you like it because it stinks. <laughs> I've got people like that myself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! And then my last honorable mention is another Mario Van Peebles movie. Oh Jesus! Posse. <laughs> Yo, that, that joint has made the show twice, two weeks in a row, bro. Yeah, like we were kind of trashing it, but then I I watched it and I was like, wow, like I really like this movie, but it's really, really cheap. <laughs> that guy Lam- It's completely Lam- trash, but I love it. <laughs> I still liked it, but it was it, it, it was like it was even cheesier as watching <laughs> now, but I still enjoyed it. You know, just it was a fun movie. But I think the thing that stood out to me about that the most is that when I was young when it came out, I thought it was like serious, like some Clint Eastwood type of shit. But oh. then when I watched it as an adult, there were all these silly gags and corny jokes and then they had stuff that was like too modern for it to have really happened back no then when no the movie took place so and no I noticed no. all of that as an adult watching it a couple weeks ago but I still enjoyed it the same way I did back in the day unbelievable <laughs> yeah, Christopher Lambert's in there man yep shout out to Christopher Lambert <laughs> and Mario <laughs> <laughs> They are the, uh, they are the OG <laughs> goat bad movie duo. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no, who's the who's next for the honor? Yeah, Jason came and crushed the buildings on his honorable mentions. Who's next for the honorable mentions? Yeah, I don't want to follow it, but I will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, like you guys said, honorable mention could be that it's a bad movie it could be you know that just a bad movie for you right like uh pe- people wouldn't expect who to like some of these so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go ahead and rock out here uh first one is breaking all the rules i don't know if you guys seen that jamie fox and uh i think gabriel uh, yeah, yeah 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 it's uh kind of a rom-com that's not anywhere close to my genre so i i kind of keep that one keep it close, but uh, I guess I'm revealing it to, to y'all and whoever else is watching out there. Shut up. No judgment, no judgment. All right, next one is uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous. Oh. You guys seen that? Never no. seen it. No. I've heard of it, right? What's that? That's Sandra Bullock, right? Uh, uh, Kirstie Alley, and oh, it's kind of an older movie. It's about a beauty contest. It's just it got all be. this backbiting and all this stuff like like uh, similar to what you were talking about with uh, no. uh, I forget the name of the movie that you that you just mentioned the last one but uh, no Odge oh Mr. G reality things what I was thinking about with Sandra Bullock yeah then it's not that one it's yeah. not that one. it's the one that has that that weird uh, 
with everybody came to beautiful Mount Rose, Minnesota. It just, it just made me laugh so hard, man. The movie is just ridiculous. Uh, all right. So this movie, I actually don't think it's bad. I think it's hilarious. But when I was, you know, looking up movies, this was listed as one of the worst movies. I, I don't know how, but uh, nothing but trouble. You guys have seen that. What? Oh, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't what? anyone yeah. who doesn't like that movie. Nothing it was on the list. It was amazing. Awesome. Yeah, okay, cool. So I don't feel so, I shouldn't be ashamed of it, but when I saw how low it was rated, I was like, dang, man, really? That's the movie with Digital Underground and all the monsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, with the Reed. Yeah. Oh, 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 Debu. I love that movie. Reed, yeah, I love it too. I I know. Know. Maybe I shouldn't have put it on here, but you know, they had it rated low, so I was like, well, I shouldn't be, I love the movie and maybe I should be ashamed, I don't know. It is, a, it is a ridiculous premise, but it is brilliant. I love yeah. that. Yeah, that, it's web, fun. that website can go to hell, yo. I'm sorry. I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have mentioned it, but it was on a couple. I was like, <laughs> their, their opinions can go to hell. I don't care what it was. <laughs> and I'm with you. Uh, we got two left. One is Pool of Rock with Jack Black, and the oh, other one is uh, Howard the Duck. Mm. Nice. It's a classic. I love it. I, I love it. But I have no shame on the list. None whatsoever. I yeah. love that movie. Me too, man. But it, it, it was just like nothing but trouble. It's on everybody's website. It's one of the mo worst movies ever made. I don't get it, but. I, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I agree. We'll probably hear more from that coming up. Not gonna lie. I, I get it. It's a terrible movie. But, it's a, <laughs> but I still love it. It's a terrible movie. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. Look, yeah. uh, this, all right, this is all I'm gonna say about Howard the Duck. I'm just gonna Come get on. this real quick. <laughs> that woman, I'm done, so you ain't, you ain't gotta be real quick. I'm finished. No, nah, he's derailing the show. <laughs> I'm just saying, the, the girl who played, you know, who was in that band, she was willing to sleep with a duck. All right, she was about to sleep with a duck, and she's not making it in the business. But like, you about to, you about to <laughs> bang an alien duck, and you can't. You ain't gonna sleep your way to the top? Like, that doesn't mean <laughs> so, hey, It was yo, genuine. It wasn't about woman and duck. It was a genuine connection. <laughs> straight, straight beastiality. What? Let's go. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a humanized duck. <laughs> she was about to let Howard quack from the back. And she told me she's not, she's not giving up nothing to get ahead. Did you just say you wasn't about that? that. You wasn't was about that. The club with feathers in her mouth. <laughs> she was too That's proud for that. She mm. she fell in love with Howard. There was no no Howard slander. <laughs> Howard Howard is the man. No <laughs> Howard slander. Hey, no yeah. Howard slander. Uh, fair yeah. enough. I'm, I'm just saying that's an inconsistency to me. The, but <laughs> I'm sorry. Funny thing is I mean, Howard Duck is like a. I have a personal connection to that because there was one summer when me and my cousin watched that movie like every day because it was like one of the few vhs tapes that we had and we didn't have cable so we would just <laughs> rotate this the a few uh it was howard the duck and the, and the original batman and like one other one we would watch them every day just because that was it i love howard the duck fair enough i'm just saying that is just not a realistic depiction of a girl trying to make it in the music business but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Antoine or Greg. I'll hit the honorable mentions list here. Um, so first on my honorable mentions list is Booty Call with Jamie Foxx. Wow. Uh, uh, I have, no, I, who don't like Booty Call? I, I like it, but a lot of people say it's a terrible movie, but I said, you know what? I'm not ashamed of any movie on this list. I've Let's just be clear heard. with that. Never you never seen Booty Call? You never seen Booty Call? You gotta oh, see it. How? How, my nigga, how? Uh, I think that that response uh, says everything I need to know. <laughs> Fair, enough. Fair enough. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to quack from the back for that. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no more quacking from the back. <laughs> so. Next on my list, uh, honorable mentions is No Holds Bar with uh, Zeus, also known as Debo, with uh, Hulk Hogan. 
Mm-hmm. Although now when I watch the movie, I always picture the meme of Hulk Hogan. He's getting ready to spray paint NWO, but you know what the meme is used for? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> that's one of my favorite joints. Um, next. That, that should have been on my poorly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that part. So Highlander 2, The Quickening is definitely on my list. Um, Sean Connery couldn't save the movie, but guess what? Doesn't matter. Him, his ridiculous hair, the hoop earring, everything, the storyline. And I found out this week, right? There's like a bonus, like remix version of the movie, which I got to see, but uh, wow. yeah, I love it. Yeah. Cool. Watch party. Watch party. <laughs> Yo, Just for Greg. <laughs> I will watch it and ring this movie out that had Sean Connery up there in that terrible wig. <laughs> it looked like he had a head full of soy sauce noodles on his head. It was <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? What is that what I'm saying? Go ahead, Antoine. Go ahead, man. So, <laughs> then next on my list, I don't know why everybody hates this movie. I love it. I'm a sucker for a good rom-com to me. The photograph, <laughs> Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield. I enjoyed that movie a lot. I own the movie, love watching it, but for whatever reason, people hate it. How was that on the ashamed list? I don't understand. Uh, I, a, a lot of people, a lot of people don't like this movie. A lot of people don't like that movie. I never even knew that until I was like, wait. I thought the movie was maybe 20 minutes too long. But mm-hmm. out of that, I thought it was. A, I actually thought it was a good movie. Because yeah, I mean, and, and if you don't like it, it's just like okay. I didn't think there was that much contention behind that movie. Oh, I didn't, oh, that, <laughs> I didn't realize there was that. It was that bad. <laughs> All of a sudden, folks became screenwriters overnight. Plot hole, this, that, and it was it was ridiculous stuff that I've never heard for a movie. I'm like. You waited for this movie to say that? Right. Come on. <laughs> the, soundtrack, yeah. the soundtrack was crazy. Yeah. The oh, yeah. Was crazy. I'm a fan of yeah. anything Issa Rae. I love Issa Rae. So I love that I movie. I haven't seen the movie yet, but everything I've seen her do or in, I, 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 I rock with. It's I'm a, a good fan movie. of her. Yeah, like Lakeith is dope. Like, that movie, movie was good. I don't yeah, I feel Lakeith. much better about loving this movie because I've not met one person. So I had an argument last weekend with my cousin over this movie. This is without even going on this list. So we were just talking about rom-coms and stuff. And so we are howling about it. I said, yeah, the photograph, I know people hate it. I re- it turned into like a dissertation of text messages. I said, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> 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 like 500 pages worth of just, here's what's wrong with the movie. Here's why it sucks. How could you love this? And I'm like, oh, the movie's dope. I don't know what you're missing. I don't know what everybody else is missing. And quite frankly, it's a family-friendly program. Can't say what I want to say, but just know I don't care. It's <laughs> not family-friendly with Greg on here. All this, all this, with all this me bashing. There will be, there will be no Greg slant. You know what? I can't make that. <laughs> yeah, I can't make that a rule. Can't make that a rule. I'm sorry, Greg. So I got one more for my honorable mention. Two, yes, actually, but I, not me. <laughs> Oh, we done? Oh. (laughs) So, uh, Zane's addicted. So, the movie, it's it's borderline hilarious to me. So, I don't know if you ever read the erotic novels by Zane. So, they had, they decided to make a movie of Boris Kojo, um, what's her name? Something Neil, and (laughs) Tyson Beckford. No, not at least, not at least Neil. Um, Sharon Leal. Sharon Leal. Oh, yeah. And so, I just thought that, again, I enjoyed the movie, but I would, the only slander I ever had for the movie is, I thought they should have cast my like maybe Neil Longer or something. When you see all these dudes fighting over Sharon Leal, I was like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, for the if you read the, I read the book before, and so I'm like, I wasn't picturing her. Don't know if they couldn't afford somebody else, but yeah, nah, they shouldn't have went with the Walmart version. They should have upgraded that. So it would have been way different. <laughs> So you still liked it after the book? That that says something. I haven't seen the movie. So. <laughs> Yo, all yes. I know is the, the, just the names that you named. It sounds very Tyler Perry esque. <laughs> this movie. <laughs> I seen it. it wasn't that bad. But it's just yeah, it's... strong, strong, greasy yellow niggas, and that is ah, yo, oh, yo. <laughs> that is Tyler Perry. Actually, movie. that's not a bad way to describe it. There we go. Yeah, it's very, it sounds very Tyler Perry esque, like he did the casting. <laughs> Family show. <laughs> <laughs> Family show. 
<laughs> if you can't afford to do it right, leave it in the book. So I'm done. And the discussion for my honorable mentions. All right, Greg. Well, uh, yeah, I'm gonna fly through these joints, man. We already mentioned Howard the Duck. You know what I'm saying? I, lots of people hate it. I still think it's a quality watch uh, because it's fun to make fun of. Uh, okay, here's where it's gonna get a little dicey. Um, where I actually should be ashamed of this one, like for real, but it is hilarious to me. And that's White Chicks. Terry Crews makes me laugh so hard in that damn movie. And it, the movie is complete and total donkey shit. It is horrible. But Terry Crews is just insanely funny in that damn movie. So I, I put it on the list because I'm a, I should be ashamed that I'll watch it and like, it, yeah. if I could record it, I would just fast forward to all of Terry Crews' scenes. Yeah. It's so damn funny in this movie. That is a strong right. pick. That is a it strong is. pick. I'm not on the main list. Because that is a strong <laughs> pick right there. It is. It is a very strong pick. I'm speechless. And yeah. the reason why it's not on my actual list is because I don't like the movie enough. <laughs> That's all. That's why. But is it, it is, to, to quote uh, TJ, it's some shameful shit. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> right, the next one um, is uh, Cable Guy. The Cable Guy with Jim Carrey. Surprisingly, lots of people hate it. I was shocked by this. This is hilarious to me. me too. I don't know. Like I, I don't know what people were expecting, but. I mean, Probably because it was dark, and you expect Jim Carrey to be silly and goofy, and it was a really dark movie. But I, the thing that was, was turned a lot of people off. Fair enough, but he was still silly and goofy. He was just silly and goofy in a stalker, creepy kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> it's still hilarious to me. I love that damn movie. Nah, me too. <laughs> right, bless you, whoever sneezed. I didn't see it. I was looking down. Um... <laughs> The next movie that a lot of people don't like, and I don't know why, because a lot of people have kind of bitten the style off of this joint. Hancock with Will Smith. Yeah, Lots was, of people don't like it, and I don't People don't like it? it? Wow. That's a good yeah. thing. It, yeah. It's basically the boys without all the corruption. He's just a shitty hero. <laughs> just really bad. He's a bad person. <laughs> Awful at being a superhero, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great. And he's look. Let's just be honest. He's the kind of superhero that we need in this world. <laughs> like, let's be honest. <laughs> we need a guy like that. He's 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 very human in his horribleness, but he's still super. And so, you know the the brilliant thing about that movie was the angle of the superhero needing like a a marketing guy to help save his image. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like a like a wildly uh, original. Uh, entry point for a superhero movie back then. I thought it was brilliant. People were mad. I was like, it was, they were like, it's Will's worst movie. I was like, how? The Wild Wild West still exists, right? <laughs> but anyway. I hope that's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Wild Wild West didn't make it up here. <laughs> oh, hell no. Nobody likes the Wild Wild West. <laughs> Nobody. Somebody in their like, hand, yo. I mean, that's it, it's actually honorable mention status in this category for me. Because I'll watch it and, like, have fun watching it, but I know it's not that good. I would I would, I would, would put that on my honorable mention for this category. I'm telling you, man, I tried <laughs> to watch it. I tried to watch it after the first five minutes, Jason. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I, like, I can tell you how bad the Wild Wild West was. The soundtrack was better than the movie. That should let you know how bad the how that movie was. I don't know though. That happened a lot back then. So like, oh yeah, but late nineties, early two thousands. That was a lot of movies. He's trying you to say the soundtrack was trash, Jason. <laughs> oh oh. <laughs> there will be no the Cisco joke. slander on this. I there missed the no joke. Slander. My bad, Greg. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That one went over your head. My fault. My fault. <laughs> but anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space. Ah. I'm gonna say something right now. Yeah. It should. It should be at, at my actual top five because this movie is just so 
funny to me for all the wrong reasons. It is just a mess. But nobody likes it but me, apparently. <laughs> it is just, if you ever have, if you've got time to waste, I don't want you to try and fit this in during a busy time. But if you've got actual time to waste, like if the pandemic started right now, that's would be a movie that you should watch because it is just hilariously bad. It is just garbage. It is one of the worst things that I've ever seen and I love it because it is so bad. It's so entertaining to me. And last but not least, My Blue Heaven. You know what this is? It's a movie with Steve Martin and Rick Moranis. And basically, Steve Martin is a mobster. And he goes into the uh, Witness Protection Program. And basically, he's supposed to be this cool, slick uh, gangster. But he's just... Steve Martin? This. He's just Steve Martin. That's all I can say. He's not, <laughs> he's not cool. He's not slick. And it's just a bad movie and it is shameful but i like the movie anyway and i couldn't tell you why i will watch it every time it comes on it's I, just bad and, is uh, it and i don't know anyone who likes it huh is it, ser is it a serious drama no it is not oh. it's not a serious drama i wish it was it, it, it might have actually played better if it was <laughs> i'm here for all the steve martin slander i'm steve here. martin like it, it's just um, I, and I enjoy the movie and I know it's dog shit but I enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> every time I see it it's just got a bunch of it's just bad it's, it's food just, it's, it's like if Goodfellas was written by a 12 year old that was trying to be funny it's that kind of movie it's just not good at all <laughs> but I enjoy it but yeah, that, that's that's the end of my little honorable mentions. Yo, Can I say something real quick? Go ahead, go ahead. You just remind me of Hussein Steve Martin, the movie that I should have had in my top five for this, but it's The Jerk. Because nowadays, <laughs> that whole black, uh, 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 a white dude growing up black and acting black would be wildly problematic these days. But the movie was hilarious. Like, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. When, when he made the glasses and had the thing and then everybody was <laughs> like, their eyes were permanently cross-eyed from oh, using Yeah. It's funny, oh, it's a weird. movie. But uh, this is the thing about that though, when you say act, I don't think he was acting black. He was just really, really white in a black house. Yeah, <laughs> but just the character, and that being an aspect of his character. And it was like, I think that that would be problematic if somebody made that. I had a problem with it. You can't remake it. I had a problem with it when it was made, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I had yes. a legitimate problem with it. Yes, he did. Aji has always been uh, very, uh, very Malcolm X-esque. He's, 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 he's basically Huey from the Boondocks. He's been yep. this movie <laughs> since he was a child. That's yep. not, uh, but I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> not fair, but I appreciate the compliment. Um, all right, yo, number fives. Uh, I think I, I'll just go ahead and go first because my number five has been mentioned several times. And that is Howard the Duck. Jesus. Number five is Howard the Duck. I mean, like, you know, every, <laughs> first of all, the soundtrack, underrated. Holly Robinson Pete is on there, underrated. Leah Thompson, underrated. Uh, bro played Philzy. I forgot his name. His name escapes me at this point, but he's also was underrated. Robbins, I think. Robbins, Tim Robbins. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Or Tom is it Tom or Tim? Anyway. Yeah, Tim. Yeah. yeah. I just you know I love the movie. It's it's literally uh it's a classic in terms of childhood. It's right up there with like Sandlot and stuff like that. Man, it's just mm -hmm. something that I watched. I watched several times. Um, and it wasn't the only DVD, you know what I mean? Or only only uh, VHS there, you know? Um, didn't realize he was part of the Marvel Universe. That was interesting when I found that out. I was like, that's crazy. But um, <laughs> but yeah, no, Howard the Duck, man. That's my number five. <laughs> talked about it. But honestly, if it wasn't for how much other people dogged it, 
it probably wouldn't even belong on here. I, I like the movie as a movie straight up. So that's my number five. Yeah, I think it's appropriate because of our age. Like, it's appropriate for us to like that movie because we were young when it came out. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of haters. Like, no shame in that. I couldn't believe how many people don't like that movie. I, you would you would be surprised if you looked that movie up and saw the critics. It was crazy. I was surprised. Yo. You got a lot of venom, man. Get out of that, Joe. <laughs> anyway. Critics are terrible, man. <laughs> Hey, look, man, the, the critics were adults. Like, they shouldn't like this movie. <laughs> They're like, this is junk science. It's like, yo, this is, a, hey, I don't worry about this science. How the duck? I'm talking about this is junk science. It's a duck from outer space. Why are we trying to make sense of this? Like, I don't get it. Like, come on. Yeah, fair enough. But like I said, it's uh, yuck. <laughs> Greg, you're number five. Oh, look, my number five, and y'all are probably gonna be like, word, but listen, Waterworld. Nobody <laughs> can tell me why Waterworld stinks. I've, I've had this conversation several times and everybody's like, that movie sucks. And I'm like, why? And everybody's like, because it sucks. And I'm like, that's not a reason, you jackass. <laughs> like, tell me why it stinks. <laughs> you can't. It is hilarious. It, 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 it's a good movie. Um. <laughs> The, the bad guy that was in charge of the smokers was just an awful dude. I was like, what's his name? Um, Dennis Hopper, I think. Yeah, Dennis Hopper, he killed that role. Kevin Costner was a complete ass in the whole movie. <laughs> Chopping off those girls' hair <laughs> for, for talking out of line. He was an aqua pimp. He, caught, he chopped the hair and put it in place. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And not to mention, it's got some of the just some of the funniest lines I've ever heard in my life <laughs> in the whole movie. Like, like, like I was telling TJ earlier, this I use this line to this day because it's just hilarious. Do you guys remember when Kevin Costner? Uh, y'all have all seen Waterworld, correct? Yeah. All right. When he when he's um got that little girl with him and he's <laughs> and he was trying to make a deal. To, to get some, I don't know, what was it, ski boots or some shit? They all love ski boots for some reason in this movie. But he was trying to get some boots, and the dude was trying to make a trade. He was like, I'll give them to you for 40 minutes with the wee one. <laughs> that shit. It's one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. I was like, this is disgusting and hilarious. Who the hell says that? 40 minutes Kelly. with the wee one. <laughs> so funny to me. Oh, like I said, that probably wouldn't fly these days. <laughs> but, but yeah, still, nobody can tell me why the movie is bad, but everyone agrees it's bad. And I have zero shame in it. I love that movie. I I don't mind that movie, but I do have two reasons why that uh, movie could be considered bad. Um, I think it's Kevin and Costner. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. This is um, outright Costner bashing. That's what this is. Outright Costner bashing. <laughs> I'm gonna digress. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that is a good point, Greg, because I remember everybody when it came out, everybody was trashing it. And then when I finally watched it, I was like, it's pretty good. This isn't really that bad. Like, yeah, I was it's looking for it to be the worst movie ever. And then it just felt like it just became like a cultural thing to just say that movie is bad. And it just kept growing on from there. But I thought it was, I mean, it was a run of the mill 90s over budget action movie. Like it, 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 that, it is what it is. Like I thought it was good based on that premise. This yeah. is a nineties over the top action movie. <laughs> you already know what you're gonna get from that. Exactly. I told you this was a simple case of Costner bashing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh but nobody but nobody told you why it was bad. They just said it was bad, right? Yep. Yeah. Like yep. I said, I'm not saying it's great. What I'm saying, it's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. But anyway, I'm, that's my number five. I definitely will watch it before I watch Twister. Christ. All right. <laughs> oh, Antoine, go ahead, man. It was number five. Yup, number five. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 1990 joint. So <laughs> I love that movie, Nostalgia. I grew up a Ninja Turtles fan. I don't understand when I became an adult why everybody hated this movie. I don't know. Um, but to me, the movie was well done for his time. I love the action. And as a kid, 
I couldn't get enough of it. So that's my number five. I have nothing bad to say about it. Are you talking about the original, the first Ninja Turtles one? Or the Yeah. One, the, the Secret of the Ooze, I think, is the one that everybody bashes. Yeah, maybe. I don't one. know. Maybe I confused it. Because I like the first one. I said, are people sure they hate this one? The one where they like battling Shredder on the roof and Ralph isn't like in the tunnels, but he saves April O'Neil and all that shit. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> ah. Love it. It's I my like, number I five, though. The second one getting destroyed. Yeah, the second one. The first one. Being... Second one deserved to be put in the headlock. That joke was horrible. <laughs> the second was one with Vanilla Ice, or was that? Yeah, the... that's the one with Vanilla Ice. <laughs> That might be the one everybody's killing. Yeah, that's just yeah, right. no. The first one was good. Yeah, go ninja, go ninja, go, go ninja. <laughs> oh yeah, <I> that. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> and plus, they just got bad criminals in these movies. Yeah. Like, let's be honest, man. Like turtles are not. If a nigga's been living in the sewer, I'm gonna smell them creeping up on me. That's all I'm saying. Like, how do you let them sneak up on you? <laughs> the ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> they match the smell. <laughs> the smell. Yeah. They smell, they smell like yesterday. Well, they smell like yesterday's asshole, and they creeping up on you. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, <laughs> what the hell is the that? Pizza smell? <laughs> it's a family show. Fair no. enough. Yeah, hey, you know, you know, I'm being too realistic about it. All right, go on. No, my bad. I'm derailing. TJ, TJ, uh, five. Uh, <laughs> Number five for me, coming in hot, fellas. Stepfather two, make yeah. room for the daddy. <laughs> you guys see that one or not? I find it to be hilarious, man. But the look on people's face when you, when I tell them that I like the movie is number one, either they haven't seen it and it sounds like some kind of pervy thing, <laughs> or they have seen it and they say that movie was twisted and sick. How did, how is that? You know, how do you like that movie? I, I just it was so funny to me, man. For real. <laughs> So many lines, so yeah. many. It's hilarious. So Greg, you heard me and Rob. We, we, we spit them out all the time about the roomy trunk space and everything. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, so. That's what you for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, oh, man. Just, just like all these other movies, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't do too well on uh, Rotten Tomatoes and those other things, but. I like it. Maybe I should be ashamed, but I, I like it. I don't know. <laughs> nah, Rotten Tomatoes is losing their luster, man. A lot of those movies, like when I was like doing recon for this, and I looked up some of the movies considered bad by Rotten Tomato standards. I'm like, this? You hate this movie? Yeah. Like, who's doing the ratings for this? Like, I was like, nah, demographic is off. Nah, we Rotten to movies. We do. <laughs> Jerks. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, what's your five? All right, so I had to approach this with a couple of different ways. Um, so the for number five, I approached it as movies I shouldn't like because they are wildly problematic right now. Um, and it's like when it when it came out, it was controversial when it came out, but now it's like borderline cringeworthy. Mm -hmm. Some of the shit that happens in this movie, but. I enjoy it because it's just a visual <laughs> movie, but a clockwork orange. Like the Whoa, wait a minute. It, I, like I there's like the the rape scene and like the home invasion and some of the other scenes, it's like there's a lot of like grimy, cringeworthy shit. And like we're more sensitive to certain things now, and it kind of like is heightened when you see it. But A Clockwork Orange is a classic. Stanley Kubrick is the GOAT. Um, but I just feel like I shouldn't like that movie nowadays. Um, but it's great. It's I don't great. know too many people who don't like that movie. Like well, I, it was, but yeah. no, but it was like wildly controversial. I remember reading about it when it first came out. Like people were trashing it when it came out because it was so violent and the sexual aspect to it. Um, <laughs> Almost like it was like a snuff film. That, it was, wow. that's yeah, exactly like what I thought. But, that's yeah. exactly what I thought. Yeah, but like the home invasion, rape, and murder is like out of control. You know what I'm saying? And this is like your lead character. 
and and you know when you really look at the big picture the whole point is about like how you can be changed and and forcing that rehabilitation on them it's a bigger story than that but just that one scene it's like oh shit like this is what our main character is doing in this movie like how are you supposed to root for him in the end after seeing this shit and it, and it happened early it happened right early right right yeah yeah, first quarter of the movie. Yeah, then he turned on his homies. He beat the shit out of his boys and shit. And it was like, damn, like, you know, they took anti-hero to another level on that. But um, but yeah, I, I mean, I enjoy it. And like I said, Stanley Kubrick is the goat. When I when I first saw that movie, I was like, yo, I was like, I thought that they had like, I thought that they were um a lot more vigilant back then. They used to talk about how stuff was more <laughs> was more wholesome back then. I was like, yo, they was letting this on the... Right. It was wild. Like, I, I was shocked. I was like, wait a minute. Let me... When did they start giving ratings to movies? Because this... Right. Oh, no wait, they should have made it in theaters. Yeah, that shit was wild. That shit was that wild. Joint, that joint was very realistic, man. And wow. Hey, I was like, yo, they did this. But I see the angle that Jace is coming from. He's going from straight shame <laughs> that, he's going from 100% shame. Or it's like, yeah, I shouldn't. Like, he watches this movie. He watches the movie. Just pull blanket up over himself. And he's like, oh damn! Clutching his pearls while he's watching this. Number four, man, Antoine. You're so. My number four is one of my favorite movies, although again, it's a hated movie. The Tall Guy with Jeff Goldblum and uh, Emma Thompson and Mr. Bean, also known as Rowan Atkinson. So in The Tall Guy, Jeff Goldblum is like an actor over in London or whatever, and he's in a show with Mr. Bean. And yeah, let me ask, you ever seen Mr. Bean? I've seen yeah. Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he's doing some Mr. Bean shit in this movie or whatever, except he actually talks. And so, <laughs> you know, he's a jerk. And so this movie is like one of the driest humor, but yet hilarious movies I've ever seen. Like the sex scenes, they're like smashing fruit. It's like the imagery is like hilarious. It's so over the top. It's like, you can't take it serious, but there's a rom-com story taking place underneath. And then it's like, Jeff Goldblum, I don't even think he's 6'5", but then you see him sitting in his chair. Clearly this chair is too little for him, but they're trying to paint him as being so much larger than everybody else. <laughs> and this movie is like hilariously funny, but it's a, uh, it's an old school movie from like the end of the 80s or whatever, but I love The Tall Guy. If it comes on, I'm guaranteed to sit down and watch it every time. But it's a it's a hilarious movie to me. But yep, that's my number four. All right. I need to uh, add that to the list. I don't know that I one. I never heard of that, Johnny. I saw it once, and Antoine, you are right to have this on your list. That movie absolutely stinks. It is just horrid. I can't believe that you are. Uh, Paid by this. It is the piss. Jesus. Oh, it's so bad. It is such horse. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Actually, it is. I feel like this is Goldblum, his catalog should have been featured a lot more over the past few, past few, few episodes. I'm kind, of, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of shocked he hasn't been mentioned oh. <laughs> Oh, the tall guy. Like uh, normally, I say anyone who likes that movie mm. needs to go to the uh, the rope and and loose stool leg store. And just damn. <laughs> that is not that 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 We're not gonna do that. We're not gonna. Do that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's absolutely hard, but it's it's delightful. The Andrew Lloyd <laughs> Webber music, the pianos. It's like it keeps you entertained. Look, it's I just... can't be mad at you because you like what you like. I was just telling you that belongs there. <laughs> Jeez, it's shitty. Oh, all right. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta ask him. I gotta do really for like 15 seconds. So, okay. Highlander, Highlander, or the tall guy? Which one is worse to you? I will watch the tall guy a million times. <laughs> <laughs> a million. Oh, and you know what? And I was thinking why. Because oh, everyone told me the Highlander was awesome. And I expected awesome. They and were right. <laughs> It was yes. Enough. Were... Enough. Enough. Yo, you're not gonna derail the show. You're not gonna derail the show. Greg, Greg, you're number four. Oh man, man, oh man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still shocked. <laughs> still in shock by the tall guy. I can't believe 
Jesus, you did speak <laughs> for that worship. God damn. <laughs> but anyway, my number four is Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite is just shamefully bad. It's just a stupid story. But I'll tell you right now, I I am a fan of horribleness, like I told you, and dude, that, the Uncle Rico character in this movie is just, it, it's worse than that alone. He's such a loser. It is like the most pathetic dude I've ever seen. <laughs> He's, and it's shockingly realistic because I know people like him. It's just so bad. And I guess it, it's just, everyone, y'all have all seen Napoleon Dynamite before. Yeah. It, no, I'm, I can't be the only one that likes it, but I know most people just want to vomit when they see it. And I love it. Why. It is absolutely <laughs> terrible, but it makes me laugh because it's terrible. It took me to watch it. Is. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, you got it. I was gonna say, you know what it is about that movie? Like, if you took those same characters and that same storyline and made it take place in, like, New Jersey or LA or DC or, like, it wouldn't have the same appeal. It's no. because it takes place, it was in Iowa or Idaho, a place that you don't yeah. see in movies. They have their own dialect, <laughs> their own cultural, um, cultural uh, behaviors that are different than in like mainstream East Coast, West Coast cities, that's the appeal of that movie because the story is pretty basic. Yeah, like, it's that, just a like, nothing story. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's that's incredible. Like you can yeah. take that and, and make it take place in this town with these local people and that is what its appeal is. That's brilliant. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what shitty state. It's somewhere in the mid, in the midst of Midwest. Yeah, I think it's one of the. It's, it's, it's one it of the. I think it was Iowa. I thought it was. I, I think it was Idaho. No, it was, oh man. It can one be of the Iowa, state. Wyoming. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They're all the same. All those flatland, bullshit <laughs> towns are goofy, <laughs> shitty places that nobody wants to be. And for them to film a movie there was ballsy <laughs> enough. But then the characters. It's almost like they just took a camera and walked around a podunk shit neighborhood and just filmed someone's life. It was just, and it was hilarious to me. Okay, I'm gonna, thought, um, I'm gonna cut this off because, uh, you know, because I have to. <laughs> like, what the hell? What the hell? Anyway, so um, Jason, you're number four. Um, my number four, so I had to take the, uh, you know, I told you I was approaching it in a way of like, I really like it, but I shouldn't because it's problematic. Um, my number four is Dumbo because of the crows. Jesus. What? Oh. Wow. Okay. I enjoy the crows from Dumbo because when wow. I saw the movie as a child, I didn't know they were racist. Oh. I just enjoyed them. <laughs> I did not realize the show. how crazy they were until I was in my twenties watching it again. But when I saw it, I was like, "Wow, these crows are hilarious!" <laughs> I didn't connect it. I didn't connect it. What, what's your number three? Birth of a Nation, nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Uh, you no. want to tap dancing crows? Jesus, bro. You should be very ashamed of this. The crows, they, they were, they were, they were entertaining. Yeah. The, the, the crazy part is mm -hmm. they were the only thing about the movie that I really enjoyed. And maybe, oh, that, was, maybe that is further evidence of the <laughs> racism that I picked up on as an adult, but because I related to these comical black characters, but at the time watching it, I didn't, I wasn't thinking all militant like that. Like I wasn't like the <laughs> negative representation of black people. These animated crows are supposed to be black people. Like I wasn't like nine years old, really piecing that together. I just saw these talking birds and they were hilarious. <laughs> and it's like, 
They were the only thing I enjoyed with the movie. Uh-huh. Then when I saw it as an adult, I was like, oh shit, like this is bad. Like, so you would have been happy if they made a movie that was all crow, no Dumbo. You would have been, oh boy. Oh, I would have watched it back then, back when I was a kid. Like I said, I wasn't, I, I didn't know, I wasn't thinking about it like that. You know, they, so they, they would have, so you know, the disturbing about, thing about it is, the disturbing thing about that is that I'm one of the people that didn't connect how racist that shit was. Mm. And it's kind of like a method to implant um, stereotypical programming mm. for you to like think this is normal. And it's like in your mind, you're seeing these birds, but it's really, they're modeling them after cartoonish caricatures of black people uh-huh. and not knowing it, it could have shaped people's perception of what black people are supposed to act like. And I'm, and I'm sure it did. And I'm sure a whole bunch of shit like that back then did that and before it. And I'm aware of all of that as an adult. And it's, when I saw it again in my twenties, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> When I first watched it, I thought those crows were hilarious. And they were the only thing that I even cared about in that whole movie. <laughs> so you were just waiting for the crows to come back and with like a, a movie called Yazza Boss by Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that would have been blatant. That would have been blatant. But the jive, talking, the jive talking crows was just entertaining. Like, the jive talking. <laughs> to be completely honest, like, Oh, they boy. still were funny. What what makes us mad is that they were caricatures of black people. But they were still hilarious. You can't deny that shit was funny. Well, bl- well black people are hilarious. Right, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like you know, it's just the idea behind it, the fact that they did these caricature black dudes and made them birds. At least they didn't make them monkeys because I refused to watch The Jungle Book. I was woke enough not to watch the Jungle Book as a kid and really care about because I didn't want to see Talking Monkey with a black man voice because that would have that would have that would have pissed me off. But yeah. the crows and Dumbo, I don't know. I didn't I didn't I didn't <laughs> it didn't connect until I was in my twenties and I thoroughly enjoyed them. TJ, you're number four. I feel I mean I feel like I don't know man, maybe I was a really warped kid because I don't I was, I'll be looking at this stuff, I'll be like you see what these races are out here talking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, TJ, you're double. Well, uh, I ain't throwing no shade, Jason. You got it on the right list, man. That's the important thing. Uh, <laughs> round number four is the Mangler. Now, I have no defense, admittedly, for the quality of this movie. It's. I don't know why I find it so entertaining. Me and my boy used to watch it, laugh all the time. Um, I'll say this, it's almost like they knew it was bad, so they just kind of lean into it. You know, like, <laughs> oh, let's we'll just go ahead and lean in, and that's what makes it so entertaining. Uh, but I know it's bad, I know I shouldn't like it. Guilty pleasure, man. So that's my number four. <laughs> See, I get behind that. The reason you like it is because it's bad, right? Yeah, yeah. You're not like en- engulfed in this world. Like, Ooh, what's gonna happen next? We're getting mad. No, <laughs> no. They know it's bad too. That's the thing. They they know it's bad. You can tell, man. They just leaned all in. They had to know. Well, unfortunately, for my number four, this is one that I truly am embarrassed uh, that I, I I care about. Well, care about is probably too strong, but that I enjoy watching. If it comes on, I'm gonna watch it. I might even throw it on while I'm doing something. It's Knight's Tale with Heath Ledger. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a it's a bad movie. Um, I like the idea of the job thing. I like the idea of stuff being out of time in terms of them like making it like a fake sports thing and, you know, and uh, having the crowd hyped up. I like the way that they do that, how they have the rock music included, the underdog story, all of that. It's like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? I don't know, oh my God. You know, so it's like, I mean, it really does, it captures a lot of stuff, I think, from, I don't know, from childhood and the idea of him changing the stars. And I just like, I just like the movie. Um, I can't, I can't fully, um, I'm embarrassed that I like the movie. <laughs> I, really am. I, I really am, I'm embarrassed I like the movie. It's hard for me I've to never put seen it. it. I can't, I can't dog you or nothing. I've never seen the movie. I mean, honestly, that, you know, 
that's how shitty it seems. <laughs> I didn't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even bother. <laughs> uh, number three. I was expecting that movie to be like, like uh, Braveheart. And then basically uh, it was marketed and promoted. Yeah. It felt like it was like a Braveheart type of movie, like serious and fights and like an epic sword movie. But then it quickly turned into like a Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was, you know what it was? I think that I like about it. It is really, it was really, uh, at least as far as I know, as far as my, um, my palette in movies, it's kind of one of it's kind of a one of a kind movie. It's like a very yeah. unique movie. Yeah, it's not great, but it's unique, and it's like because it's unique, and because they took so many risks, I was like, yeah, I can watch this joint every time. So, yeah, no, nah, that's true because they took like the sports movie format, like those yep. fun sports movies, like Mighty Ducks type of movies, <laughs> and then they just made it medieval jousting and that's the other part that's crazy it's this jousting movie who the hell does <laughs> who does that it's like yo you made a jousting movie right <laughs> that's the way you describe that the medieval mighty ducks is just enough for me to <laughs> just agree yo, how that is a bad terrible movie <laughs> How many times? You, are gonna hold on, you throwing movie? shade on the Mighty Ducks, though? Yeah, huh? don't throw shade on the Mighty Ducks. Hate on the Mighty Ducks. We'll talk about the Mighty. For Ducks. another time, we'll get to a whole <laughs> discussion <laughs> about that horseshit. <laughs> oh. No slander of the Mighty. Number three, uh, <laughs> TJ. Um, TJ, you're number three. Me. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys. We just gonna continue down this road. Um, <laughs> My number three is On Deadly Ground. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, Steven it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Love that it's movie. Steven Seagal, man. I, I don't know what else to, <laughs> to really say about that. But the movie is just, it's just so funny. He's, you know, playing a Native American, which already <laughs> tells you that it's the fun, but it's kind of <laughs> down in the, in the toilet. But, but oh, I realized that. It's did hilarious. you say he's playing a Native American? I forgot he was playing in Disney. I, I did say that. And uh, you remember Dirty One for Me for She was Native American too. She was, uh, yeah, yeah. Even That's why you defended the guy in the, in the, in the bar. What the hell's his, what's his Navajo name? Dances in Italy? Like this, I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe he was, maybe he was uh, half Native American or something. Maybe he wasn't full. Oh boy, oh boy. You know, he used to wear the furs and stuff. Yeah, he had the beads and all that. Yeah. I tell you what, man, that ponytail's gotten him more jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was on Showgirls too. <laughs> That's a movie I was trying to remember earlier. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna give my number three. I'm gonna just I go ahead and give my watch that again. Damn, God. I didn't know he was the Native American in that movie. <laughs> my number three is another very embarrassing movie. It's going to get better after this episode. <coughs> um, Cutting Edge. I don't know how many people have ever seen Cutting mm. Edge. Let me explain it. Jesus. Cutting Edge is a movie <laughs> about a promising young hockey player who gets met, who gets his knees messed up and a bratty, rich, spoiled figure skater who's trying to go to the Olympics. They end up Disney pairing as a team because this person says this person skates great. They have this great skater move that they do at the end to try to win them the triple landing, I think, or something like that. Uh, triple landing, something weird like that. It wasn't. It wasn't like the actual move. It's a move that you would never ever see in real <laughs> ice skating because someone would die um, if they did it. <laughs> um, but the the premise of the movie is like, you know, they're from two different sides of the tracks. But I think that what makes me like the movie is the fact that. Uh, the dude started kind of outside of taking her seriously. It's a love, it becomes a love story too. But outside of the dude taking her serious, he takes the, the actual art of figure skating serious in terms of like, he actually commits to being good at it. And it's like, and it's like that's kind of cool to see someone who's like this manly man and all this stuff, but he was just like, he committed to it. And he was like, yo, this means something to me. We need to try to win this gold medal. And they couldn't after the second day, spoiler alert, 
Um, I like the movie a lot. I can understand why people look at look at it and would say it's trash, or look at me and say I'm soft. So I'm just gonna. Leave. <laughs> um, yeah, you didn't explain to them the part where you had to move the TV so you could watch it while you were sitting down peeing, sissy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna go on. That's our show. I just I like to appreciate. I like to thank everybody for watching, for coming out. Thank you for watching. <laughs> 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 So, uh, Anton, I'm just, I'm, I can't even, I'm not even gonna try to defend myself. Anton, you, you give us your number three, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie, that was funny as shit, Greg, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Demon, Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight, right? That's my number three. So, I have an affinity for horror movies. Um, That's a good movie. <laughs> It is, it's a great movie to me, but uh, apparently the critics don't agree, so fuck the critics, right? So here we go. You have a guy, <laughs> he's been on the run for about a hundred years, you know, Breaker, you know, the great William Sattler. And so he has like this lock of the blood, trying to stop the apocalypse essentially. And so it's very campy. It's a lot of over the top with, I mean, for its time, it did what it could do. Um, Billy Zane, who I think is definitely underrated. He played the villain, you know, um, the demonic character that creates more demons from his hand. But my favorite part of the shit is when they're getting arrested by the cops. So he finally tracks down William Sattler to this like group home kind of thing. And so the cops are like, yeah, we're not dealing with your shit. And da-da-da. he's like, well, you know what? You don't, he turns around and like, he punches him, but he punches through his entire head and punches his head. And then he like, <laughs> that movie is dope, <laughs> It is, he turns around. He starts punching William Sadler with the dude's head and throws it off his head. So it's great. Um, I love the fact of all the different themes it explores through psychology, obviously through some biblical things as well. J Jada Pinkett is in it, um, a young prime Jada Pinkett. She escapes at the end. Yes, I said that intentionally, there we go. But uh, nah, she, <laughs> she becomes the new version of uh, uh, Breaker to kind of carry on the theme. And I like that they kind of alluded to a part two, but they didn't never explore it, which I was a little disappointed with, but I was kind of happy they didn't. It's a little bit of a cult classic in the horror world. I think that, again, it was ahead of its time with some of the campiness, but the blood, but it's a great movie to me. Anytime I get a chance to see Demon Knight, I watch it every single time. People watch it. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Jason, go ahead and give your three. Well, my number three is a movie that I know is terrible, but I don't care. Fat Beach. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Fat with a PA? <laughs> I don't care. Yo, I remember that. I, I remember watched that. the movie to laugh at it. Let me tell you my favorite part about that movie is apparently they shot this movie over the course of like a month or two because there are scenes when the main character, who I forget his name, but it's the same kid from Juice, and he was also in um, Stay, uh, Lean On Me. Um, you smoke him. Oh, Sam. Steal, steal from um, Juice. Okay. Yeah. Juice. He, he's the star, and then Brian Hooks is his best friend. Brian Hooks is an underrated um, uh, comedic actor in like B Black. But the thing, like, like I'm fascinated that they actually made finished, and released this movie. And the biggest, the biggest thing, and and it's like watching a, a train wreck. There are scenes when this dude will go from like the main character of the movie will go from bald head to a fade, like a box fade, like between, like it'll go back and forth. So it's like. Oh my but the whole movie takes place in the in like three days, <laughs> but this dude's haircut keeps switching back and forth. So I, I like, it's like it's like a game to watch the movie. See how many times his haircut switches? Like it'll go from short to long in a scene that takes place in the same day. <laughs> That's messed up. You know, crazy. I was actually gonna bring that up. But you 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 mentioned it. I was like, it is the poorliest edited movie I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it is like so poorly edited. <laughs> oh my god! So, like that's just it, there's just so many other things like that. But <laughs> it's just I enjoy watching it. The, the editing on that movie is on the dolomite level. It is just really. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can see the mic. You can see the mic in the chair. <laughs> There's blue mics and, and five o'clock shadows that disappear and reappear. Right. That haircut thing, I noticed it back when it came out the first time I saw it. Like on a, this was, I, the first time I saw it was like a blockbuster night where you go to blockbuster and just get a bunch of random shit. It's like, oh yeah, let's get that, let's get that. It's like me and my boys. Like, yeah, let's get this. We just got a bunch of random shit. But I noticed it back then. I was like, hold on. His haircut, he had a bald head this morning, and now he's got the full, <laughs> like, Big Daddy Kane box for the party. <laughs> um, oh, it was great. It was great. When we get money to make a movie, that is happening. <laughs> I'm letting y'all know that right now. That's gonna, that, it was gonna, it's gonna be a scene where you just, we, we're talking just, just like this, and it's gonna come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting you know right now. Greg, Greg, you're number three. All right, my number three, we, we already talked about it a little bit. And the reason it's about higher is because more people don't know about the movie. And that's Trolls 2. Trolls 2. Look, I'm going to tell you why I like this movie. <laughs> I am a fan of failure. <laughs> Let me tell you. Like, it's one thing to see a bad movie, but to see a bad movie and know they're trying their best, there is nothing better to me. They gave it their all, and it is one of the worst things that I've ever seen. Probably the worst thing. This probably should be number one. It, the whole plot, and there is... Oh there my is God. Factors <laughs> in this movie. There's not one positive in the entire movie not one and it is hilarious to watch it all crumble it is just bad but i genuinely like it people just say they like it because they hate it so i genuinely like the horribleness of this movie it gives me hope okay <laughs> with an iphone and a dream i could make this movie tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow we put it out it is just if you haven't seen it, you have to watch it. <laughs> iPhone a dream and a lobotomy, man. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem is, this is the thing about it is, you can never redo it because if you're trying, how do I, it's not funny when people aren't trying to be good and they stink. <laughs> like if you're just stinking for the sake of stinking, it's one thing. But when you're really trying, it watch, it's like watching a comedian on stage bomb. It's that <laughs> level of uncomfortability watching it, and it's just bad. It is, and I love it. I, I love this movie for all the wrong reasons. Okay. It is I was just saying, if, if you haven't seen it, you have to watch it. I it, is, it is just trash. A hundred percent bad. I showed it to you today, and I. And dude, I'll put it to you right now. By the time this movie was over, all of our cheeks were ashy from tear stains from laughter. It was hilarious. It's just bad. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and interject and um, take it to our sponsor, uh, the person that sponsors us. A uh, shout out to Black Advance for letting us do this also. Uh, but Soul Glow, um, you know, also oh silky smooth. Uh, this is where we point out different black owned businesses that we run across. I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, a young lady up in Min uh, Minnesota doing doing work um, with all the stuff going on in Minnesota right now. Georgia Fort, uh, she has her own website. She has her own like journalism stuff going on. She's putting in work in there. She got shot with a rubber bullet like the other day, um, and she's still out on these streets. So shout out to Georgia Fort. Um, if y'all get a chance to go to her website, check her out. Hey, you can donate. You know, uh, Jason. Who, who possibly could you be promoting for a black owned business? Actually, I'm gonna surprise you. So I'm gonna shout out Behold by Naftali. My boy's got his own glasses company. Oh, he makes some okay. dope frames. So you got the clear ones. Behold by Naftali. N A P H T A L I. Naftali. Um, but yeah, he makes dope frames. You get 
You can get frames. You can get. He makes sunglasses. Um, high quality. Like this is like the, like very high quality. I um, am writing this down. So yeah, <laughs> dope, dope glasses. Nice. And of course, Odd Ninja Media. Of course. Of course. Yo, Odd. shout out to Jason for getting his stuff in the comic book store. By the way, y'all. Shout out to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Big deal. Big deal. I got a copy of that joint upstairs. No, no, no bragging. No bragging. <laughs> That's the first edition. That's yeah. the first edition. Well, I'm, I'm going to get rich off of you. Don't you worry. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, Greg, uh, who, who are you promoting today? Um, I'm going to go ahead and promote this uh, dope little clothing company called Support Black College. You have on one of their hoodies the other day. Uh, and they're doing a lot of big things. And then they're just, you know, Real good companies, and they're doing a lot for the surrounding community around them with um, with all their sales and stuff. So that's my pick. Good, yeah, quality, quality hoodie too. PJ, yeah. yeah. PJ, who are you uh, shouting out for that? Yeah, you know, I spent the uh, weekend down in DC. So I'm gonna, there was a black owned pizza place down there, um, Motown Square Pizza. Oh, wow. uh, apparently, the guy's name is, I'm trying to remember. So. Paulos or something, Paulos Ballet, I think. He's from Detroit, um, and he, I guess, he ended up in D.C. and never left. Went up a pizza place, so it was, you know, they got some good stuff going on in there, man. You know, I didn't get all the toppings for obvious reasons, but it, <laughs> it was pretty good. So, y'all support him if you get a, you get a chance to be down in D.C. It's in the Northeast, by the way. Northeast. Right. Most definitely love D.C., man. Favorite, favorite. Favorite city maybe in the United States, at least that I've been to. Um, Antoine. For sure. So today, right, I'm gonna shout out somebody that's actually on our call here. I haven't been this excited since uh, Brother Man Disciple of Discipline. So I'm gonna shout out Odd Media, Odd Ninja Dot Media, Jericho Cutter. Yeah. Got first edition, looking forward to diving into that. Actually tonight, you know, I'm kind of, uh, what do they, they like to say? Um, you know what people are or whatever, when they do something a certain way, that thing, that's what I am. So I'm gonna do that at a certain time of night. <laughs> obsessive compulsive? No, 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 not obsessive compulsive, not obsessive compulsive. <laughs> that is not what I am. That is not it right there. <laughs> routine, we'll just say routine and, and place it away right now because it's escaping, oh, it's a brain fart. But all that to say, outstanding, um, looks great, looks incredible. I love the package. I look forward to diving into it and I look forward to supporting the series for a long time. Like I said, I haven't had anything like this since I was a kid. Um, and yeah, shout out to Odd Ninja Media for sure. Thank you, thank you. You, are, you will enjoy it. Yo, uh, I mean, hey, if we, had a, if we had a top five what should be made into a movie, outside of, of course, Jericho Cutter, Brother Man would also be in my top five. That needs to happen. That need that would need to happen. Brother um, Man. No. Getting down Love to the five two, gentlemen. I know that my last few have been real dicey, but uh, <laughs> I think I'll go ahead and go first. I'll go first because I feel like this pick, honestly, is my best pick. And I'll explain why my other pick is my first pick, but this is I feel like completely, completely explains this category as far as our top five. And that is Mars Attacks. I don't know how many of you like have that. ever seen Mars Attacks. Yes. I love that movie. I Absolutely. thought that movie was yeah. fantastic. And people hated it. <laughs> they hated it. They hated it for all the wrong reasons. I thought I love that movie. That movie is so fantastic. <laughs> just, uh, Jason, you're, you're saying that like you haven't heard anybody ever say that that movie was trash. Like I heard people say that was trash <laughs> forever. I don't really read critics. I understand. I I'm talking about other people. Other, stuff, so maybe that's <laughs> other people. Other people who I knew was like, "Yo, that's, tr that's a trash movie." I was <laughs> like, "Yo, this movie's all right, man." I don't know what you're talking about. Like, you know what I find with a lot of stuff like this? Like, there's been several movies on this list that are similar, but I think people are so quick to say something is bad, but they really don't get. They don't take time to think about what it is. Like Mars Attacks is not supposed to be like some serious action-packed movie like Independence Day. Like there's a certain level of expectation that you already have when you turn that movie on. But it's like when people trash movies like A Mars Attacks 
or even like a Howard the Duck. It's like, don't you see what this is supposed to be? <laughs> it's like, like it's like going to McDonald's and then complaining that it's not like Root Chris. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is what it is. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> what it is. But I'm sorry. I don't know, Jason. I do oh, my man. fries salted. Uh, anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was my that was my number too. I hear you though, because I was I was stunned, like when I actually saw the movie, because I heard about people saying it beforehand, and when I saw the movie, I was like, this joint was fire, yo! I love this movie. Wildly, and it was. People don't know how to enjoy entertainment anymore. It's like, and even back then when that movie came out, it was supposed to be ridiculous. It's like, yo, enjoy I, it. I think <laughs> yeah. it was supposed to be like an Independence Day. I think that I think that people were under the impression it was supposed to be something along those lines. And, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it wasn't that to me. I I love the way the character, like the, how how ridiculous the the Martian was, and how moving they were. It was so good. <laughs> it, was so it was exactly what I thought it would be. I didn't yeah. I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. I mean, it's exactly. not one of my favorite movies, but it's not. It's exactly what I thought it would be. That's the only way I can explain it. it it's it, it lived up to what it was supposed to be to me. It's not like it was signs or something like that. It was it was dope. Nah. Dang, signs. All right, Greg, you go, man. You're number two. No, Jesus, dear. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My number two pick is a movie that I absolutely, like, that I, I genuinely 100% love, and that is Flash Gordon. And I, I, Flash! I think we've all seen Flash Gordon. Now, yeah. I don't know. How do I put this? I'm not sure if everyone <laughs> dislikes it, but I know it is a super, it's just one of the corniest, just goofy movies I've ever seen in my life. The dialogue is horrible. The costumes horrible. The fight scenes are horrible, but I love the movie. It's just, it's just a goofy thing that I really enjoy. It's the theme music, man. Oh, and the theme music. I mean, anytime you got Queen on the soundtrack, you win it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 say that again, Greg. No, we're not talking about Highlander, buddy. <laughs> I, caught you I caught you slipping. <laughs> no, <Die! laughs> right on that slick spot that you were trying to put me on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> The story is just, just dumb. Really, the quarterback in the Jets is gonna save the, the universe. <laughs> he can't even save the season. That nigga is, he's not. I can see Sam Donald saving the universe. It's not gonna happen. By not playing. Sam Donald. Yeah. <laughs> That's like Tim Tebow saves the 10 Towers. It just doesn't, it's not gonna happen. Good Lord. All right, Jason, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> So my number two is a movie that I really have no business liking because when you look at the movie and you look at me, there's no way in hell that the filmmakers intended for me to watch it. <laughs> uh, but it's this movie called The Dressmaker. It's an Australian oh. revenge comedy starring Kate Winslet. And it's about like, she is a, this, this woman is a, uh, she goes to Europe, she leaves her small town goes to Europe and, and works closely with like, uh, I believe it's Dolce and Gabbana, but like a very like prestigious fashion brand. She goes back to her hometown and she ends up making dresses for all the women of the town. But then there's this dark secret and of her past and she has a secret <coughs> revenge plot against the entire town. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the steps that get to her revenge are, it, it is one of the most amazing uh, journeys of a revenge story. Um, and side note, I recently found out that my favorite, I realized that my favorite genre of movie is the revenge story. Hmm. So it's like, mostly it's like some one man mission, like a John Wick type of movie. But I realize that, like, as a subgenre, I, I love those movies. And I don't care how good or bad they are. I just love that that genre. 
this is more of a classy version of that genre because she's a literal dressmaker. But I promise you, watch the movie. It, it, it's it's it, 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 the, the 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 way that they show the backstory of the 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 secret that that drove her out of town, and the way that they show her reconnecting with the people in the town, and then the path to her revenge is excellent and one of the best that I've ever seen. But again, the filmmakers did not intend for somebody like me to like that movie. I don't even know why I watched it. I was just like, hmm, this might be good. I didn't even read what it was about. I was like, oh yeah, let me watch a movie today. But it is excellent. I promise you it is excellent. Wow, that's that's kind of awesome. I think the genre that that, it, that catches me like that, Jason, is the one with um, the creepy dude who won't leave the house. Um, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever that came out well like the creepy the creepy people who like like they're having affairs like look that was just a one night thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I i don't know why i enjoy those so much in lifetime just like don't go in there don't go in there. anyway you know, that's a great topic for a future episode is like yeah. like sub genres like oh. our top five like random sub genres just like that Man, that would that would God, it won't leave the house. <laughs> that, would, that would that would break me. But Dozens of movies awesome. like that. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta calm down. I gotta calm down. All right, TJ, go ahead and give your number four or right, two. Number two. All right, number two. I wonder if you guys even heard of it. Most people just kind of give me the palms up when I say the name of the movie. It's the the rocker. You guys have seen that or not? <laughs> the white shrew. Yeah, yep. Dwight Truth from the office is uh he's the drummer in the in the bait. I guess I could get into the whole thing about the movie, but I guess first I'll tell you guys my my um my son when he was really young, he used to like the movie because it's about, you know, a high school band, so there's a lot of music in there. And then, you know, I didn't really realize I liked the movie until, you know, he started leaving the room. I was just sitting there watching myself, right? <laughs> okay, well I guess I kinda like this movie. <laughs> but, uh, it's um like I said, it's about a it's about a high school band. You know, the lead singer is uh, is a uh, not a troubled young man, but his father left. I guess when he was a kid, like but when he was really young, and he never really got over it. He was always you know hoping his father would come back. A lot of the um, I guess the inner turmoil that he feels, he takes it out in his songwriting, and uh, I guess the the message in a lot of his songs is really towards his father him and the the bass player who's played by Emma Stone, <clears throat> they have kind of a, I don't know, they're teenagers, so I don't want to say sexual tension, but I'll say like, in, they're, they're, I guess, uh, they both like each other, but they're afraid to express it, right? So it's kind of a love story on top of that. But the, the way that they ended up making it as a band, they got in trouble. Well, actually, let me back up. Um, they were supposed to play the prom or something, and their their drummer got grounded. So the keyboard player, who's you guys would know the actor if you saw him, I can't remember his name. <clears throat> He's like, well, my uncle used to play drums in this band. He can probably still play, right? So the uncle is is uh, Rain Wilson or whatever the guy Dwight Schrute from The Office, and he was in this band called Vesuvius that they uh, they actually ended up dumping him right before they got big. So, you know, they're playing these gigs and stuff. And, you know, the manager calls him back and hits him with that Fuji's thing, right? He's like, uh, hey, you're a good worker. You know, how would you like a quarter raise? Move you to the register or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, they hit him with that, like, hey, you know, we, we want to give you guys the contract, but on catch. The uh, you know the the record company owner's uh, uh, nephew is a drummer, and we want him to be in the band. You got to get rid of this guy. So they scratch him out of the band. They make it big. He's bitter as all hell about it, but for obvious reasons. Um, so he's like living with his sister and bumming around and whatever else. So anyway, he he ends up going and drumming with them on prom night, and he hadn't drummed in a pretty long time. He's in there, he's feeling good. They play some song he really likes and he starts going crazy and you know, he embarrasses the kids and all that. But he's, they can tell he's a good drummer. Uh, so let me fast forward to how they got popular. So he, his, his sister kicks him out. He ends up going to, 
to live in the basement of this Chinese restaurant, right? And it's really hot down there. And they've got a band practice, a virtual band practice. This mug is in there naked because it's so hot, right? So he's playing the drums naked uh, in this, this uh, virtual practice. One of the, um, the, the keyboard player's little sister was trying to do her homework. And because he was hogging all the bandwidth with his band practice, she ends up kind of breaking in to look at their sessions. She sees this guy drumming naked. So she decides she's gonna, you know, send that stuff out live to the, for the whole world to see, to, to get back at her brother. And everyone's laughing at this naked drummer, but they hear, they listen to the songs and they're like, oh, those are pretty good, good songs. And that's how they end up making it. So, oh, shit. It's one of those kind of stories, but it's a, it's a feel good, silly kind of thing, but, and it's not, I guess, the usual kind of movie that I would be into. And, uh, and my, my boy won't even, he wouldn't even watch it anymore, but here I am still looking at it. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's my number two, guys. Antoine, yeah. um, oh, okay. Antoine, you're number two. For sure, for sure. So my number two is the exact kind of movie I love to watch. I know a lot of people uh, will feel some kind of way about it, but who cares? Norbit. So Norbit, I oh, love man. the outrageous yeah. humor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love the over-the-top <laughs> jokes. <laughs> Rasputia running around. <laughs> Chasing the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the jokes in there with Mr. Wong, the, the Chinese restaurant slash orphanage and all of that. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. Seeing just like the jokes, Rasputin running around with the nipples poking out a shirt the whole movie. They shrink Rasputin to fit into the car. It's just, I don't even know where to stop or go with this thing. It's just, every time I see it, it's more and more hilarious. I know a lot of the jokes wouldn't fly to daylight when they're at the water park and they're showing Rasputin next to Sandy Newton. <laughs> she goes down the slide and the little girl is in a pool. I think she's gonna splash on the little girl, but she knocks all the water out the pool and it's just like, crazy stuff like that. So Rasputia is my number two. <laughs> it's indefensible, but I said Rasputia, Norbit is the name of the movie, my bad. <laughs> All right, we know what We're gonna go to number Terry one. Terry Crews in that movie too? <laughs> Wait, what, what happened? Isn't Terry Crews in that movie too? Yes, he, he is. is. He is. <laughs> He's one of the brothers that they get. Oh, the part where she's doing the salt on the pizza. <laughs> she's like, yo, where is he? Where's Norbit? <laughs> hey, look, I'm not gonna lie to you. Norbert is funny as hell. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> We're going it's it is not a good movie at all, but it is it is funny. No. It is super funny. <laughs> so, all right, we're, we're coming up on time, man. You know what we do in this position. I need us to all be like as succinct as we possibly can, because uh, the ladies are supposed to film today. So, oh, last one, last one. Who wants to go first? I'll do so, it. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and get mine out of the way real quick. Because, look, you guys can give me a bashing because this is a movie I actually am ashamed that I enjoy. And it, and it hurts my heart every time it's on TV because I have to watch it. Oh, boy. And that is Little Nicky. I'm gone. Is, I'm gone. It is gone. just <laughs> so, That's our show, bro. so bad. And it is the most shameful thing that... <laughs> Look, I put it to you like this. I'd rather be caught masturbating than watching this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in. There's only three things you can take. <laughs> 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 it's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> so I'm I'm so ashamed of it. You should have gone by. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> yo no, I'm stepping in. I'm stepping in, yo. You're done. You're done for the day, man. You can't say nothing. Fine. You're done, yo. If I could meet you, I would, yo. That's it. You're done. That's it. You want me to go? You put me in a play? You want me to? All right. You know what? I'll go. I'll, you know what? I'll go. I'll go. Okay. I'll give my number one. I like. For whatever reason, when we talk about that subgenre thing, I like darker movies, like some Tim Burton type of stuff. <laughs> Things that are, have a darker uh, darker tone, tone to them. So my number one is something that a lot of people didn't like, and I understand why they didn't like it. The story was kind of confusing, it's kind of weird, but I loved it. I loved it. I loved the way that they did the action scenes. I actually just wish the whole movie was action scenes, but all that being said, Sucker Punch, Zack Snyder. I love that movie. Love it. 
I hate huh? that fucking movie. I yeah, hate you know. it. <laughs> it's visually beautiful. It's beautiful. It's all beautiful. But the story is a piece of shit and it's all over the place and it makes no sense and it angers me because the movie is so fucking beautiful. Excuse my language. The movie That's is so tough. beautiful. It's so beautiful. And it's the action scenes are awesome. Immaculate. They're but it makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. <laughs> That's my number one. I think I, I think I, I think I proved why. Uh, who's next? My number one is a movie I'll... that, I, just like my number two, I shouldn't like it. I don't think it was made for me. I enjoy it, and I don't care what anybody has to say about it. Clueless. Oh. I'm going, what is going on here? <laughs> I'm sorry. Movie is hilarious <laughs> and wildly entertaining with those shallow, like rich, uh, rich kid problems. I don't care. The movie is entertaining and it's funny. And here I am thinking I had the worst pick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. TJ, go ahead, man. No, go ahead. Antoine, go because I, I think I might end up with the biggest thinkers here. Okay, right. Antoine, go ahead. Sure. Facts, facts. So mine is, uh, my number one is Vampire in Brooklyn. So um, Great movie. I, 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 I love the movie. Um, I love the horror genre. I love what Eddie Murphy and Wes Craven did with it. Other than the wig that's on Eddie Murphy's head. A lot of comedic genius moments in this movie. Um, I like when he goes into church and he starts smoking and <laughs> he's like, God damn. <laughs> they take the service out to the line and He's like literally saying anything and the people are just like following him and it's like a lot of messages in that whole thing. But it was it was a great movie to me. I don't know why people thought it was subpar at this time. Um, and especially since he went on to make The Nutty Professor, Eddie went on a run right after that movie anyway. Wes Craven actually did too, if I think about it. So it was great. I love Vampire in Brooklyn. That's it. That's, that's a good, that's a good pick. That movie's great. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I love Kadeem Hardison in that yeah, hell yeah. He's, a, he's hilarious. <laughs> Who is this vampire in Brooklyn? Where are the you? critics? Where I'm gonna have to I would have to watch it. Neanderthals hating on vampire in Brooklyn. I was disappointed so, in the movie when I saw it. Uh, not to mention that Angela Bassett was getting with, uh, uh, what's his name? Who, G Money? Oh, G Money? Yeah, is his name always going to be? That's what we call him. We call him by his government. We call him G Money. G Money. G -Money. Uh, <laughs> brother, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, TJ, you go ahead, you're last. Look guys, I'm just gonna throw it out there and then wait for the hail of booze and then we can close uh, the show. <laughs> so my number one is the Fantastic Four. Jesus, I'm like, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, which uh, one? Yeah, it doesn't oh, matter. No, the one with Michael it B. Really Jordan. doesn't matter. No, it's Jesus the ones with uh, Alba. It's got to be Jessica Alba in this one. Pick one. So Jessica Alba one. Yeah. If I had a tomato, I'd sling it at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. You see why I had to go last? Mm -mm -mm. You know what goes great with that movie? A noose. That's what goes great. Damn. And that's Damn. our show. Remember, when <laughs> you're looking at movies. Number one, never be embarrassed by it unless it is Fantastic Four. Number two, <laughs> you can't use noose in a family show. And number three, you can't also, you can't also bring up Lumen. I mean, like, let's just be honest. <laughs> Look, that's it. I told you. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Me and TJ are going to be, me, TJ, and Jason are all going to be at the same place. <laughs> well, no, I no, hope that place is touching the ground. We all deserve death. But I hope that place is the post office, sucker. Because that's how we do with Hollywood jerks. We out.